human scout spots the moon shadow elves and shoots at the tree, which is okay, I guess. One of the elves starts chasing him, and instead of going straight, she starts jumping on the trees like a runaway chimpanzee for no obvious reason. Why? He shot his only bolt, he's vulnerable now, just go get him! But later, when Scout turns around, he has a reloaded crossbow, somehow. Did he stole it from Transylvania? Is it magical? I don't think so. I think just somebody has no idea how inconvenient it is to reload a crossbow in action. This is the main and commonly known disadvantage of the crossbow. I can't imagine how you overlook that. Because of that, scouts probably wouldn't wear this weapon in their patrols. Not to mention they wouldn't patrol alone in the middle of the night on foot while it's raining. Anyway, our scout, like any reasonable person would do, turns around and starts scanning an area like a freaking sentry gun. And of course gets ambushed from the trees the only place he should have been looking at. He falls in a shallow pond, tries to shoot her and fails, then draws his sword. <sighs> if all of this was for a scout to pose some degree of danger, couldn't he just drew his sword after first crossbow shot? There is no need for this magical crossbow to exist at all. Then when Moonshadow Elf got him by the throat, instead of begging for his life or saying something brave, he wants to know who is she. And after being spared, he doesn't even say thank you. And why would he? It seems like he has no idea what happened. He just scampers away in the forest like a spooked animal. Now when I'm thinking about it, was it even a good idea? Runan. Let's say Rayla have succeeded in killing this guy. And now we have a missing scout. And what people would do? Send more armed men to find him. Couldn't you just hide behind the trees and go back to the forest first time he spotted something? It's not like he accidentally found you. You were standing there like a bunch of creeps, trying to look ominous. What was that all about? Anyway, our scout boy goes straight to Viren and lies, I guess. Moon Shadow Elves? Then how did the scout escape? I don't know. It was muddy, wet, dark. Somehow he got very lucky. Let's say our scout was really ashamed that he got beaten by a skinny girl. What's really baffled me, that Lord Viren, man with this face, was naive enough to believe in a story I got lucky, with zero suspicion or any kind of mistrust, when even light-hearted King Harrow questions this story. I don't think Viren lied either, because that would be an advantage to know that they have an empathizing individual inside the enemy group that is not ready to kill, and Viren's actions never indicate that he knows it. Moving on to the training field, where introduced characters will show at least one characteristic that will be forgotten later. Art! Finally something I'm good at! By his first comment, he makes an impression of arrogant, narcissistic brat, but don't worry, he never says anything like this again and will act like a nice guy throughout the whole series. Then they show Claudia like very absent-minded person. This new? Relatively new. Uh, it's, it's, it's only been there for 300 years. <laughs> After that, she will be observant and focused, and this part of her never comes up again. Then Soren spots the column's crush on his sister. Oh. <laughs> I see what's going on here. Just through how Columns changed his strategy in battle. This is truly a miracle, because Soren will never show any signs of ability to spot subtleties ever again. He will be acting like complete idiot and butt of every joke. And not only he spotted it, he also offered help. Don't worry, I'll help. You see, brothers tend to be very protective about their sisters. And you have to be understanding and nice to not only be okay with it, but also help. Soren has none of these qualities. Throughout two seasons he will grow dumber and even more clueless. Also, did Column here just fell into horse shit? It's kinda unlikely to have uh, piles of wet dirt on your square. So later Soren was sent on a mission with the magic moth, that apparently flies at the speed of Golden Snitch, because the group have to ride on a full gallop to follow it. 
And don't even ask me how they kept track of small insect that leaves no trail. Of course, because of that, Moon Moth alerted the elves just in time. The group arrives, they don't check trees or bushes for ambush, they don't look for tracks in the ground or signs of camp. The Sorens' first assumption that the Moon Moth failed, and they instantly turn around and go back, without even grabbing the moth, which supposedly should be something of value, since it was in the strong box. This is incredibly dumb. When I first saw this, I thought Soren had an order from his father to sabotage the mission. But of course it's not the case, I gave too much credit to this show. Mm, back to Rayla. Some people have problems with her accent. He didn't do anything to me. How could I take his life? And even find it offensive and I don't understand why. You have no idea how Moonshadow Elves should sound like. And even if you look at it as a take on Scottish accent, we have so many individuals that I bet one of them will sound like Rayla. But you can question consistency, because not all elves sound the same. You let him live, but you've killed us all! But then again, if they are from different parts of Xadia, they might as well sound different. I personally find her accent cute and hilarious. So Rayla goes on the rogue mission, to assassinate both the king and the prince all by herself. She somehow climbs the castle wall on her pickaxes, making a terrible amount of noise. But apparently this castle is so empty that no soul have heard it. No man on the walls or in towers, and that's the alerted state of this stronghold. And then she just Naruto runs on top of the wall in daylight, because Rayla is cool. And this doesn't seem lame and hilarious at the same time. In the third season I seriously expect her to dab and do the backpack kid dance. A highly trained assassin Rayla fails to sneak behind the nerd and also fails to chase him. She was too busy jumping on the walls because Rayla is cool. Then she overturns two guards at the same time with her small weight and they just both fall unconscious. Then Calum tries to trick her in thinking that he is Ezran, and of course succeeds. Because these assassins apparently have no description of their targets. They don't bother for planning or studying their marks. They wind up themselves in ribbons that can essentially chop their both arms off, and then just jump into the castle and improvise. Very clever. I also like the part when Renan tells Rayla if they failed the mission to go home, while she would have ribbons on. If we're not back by sunrise, go home. Azran leads Callum to the secret chamber entrance. He enters the password from second try. They go inside, the room closes, and then a moment later it opens again. How did you? I just pressed all the stones with the jelly handprints. I'm sorry, what? First of all, Ezran did a mistake at his initial attempt to enter the code, so already some of the smudged stones will be wrong. Second, even if you know what stones were pressed, it still leaves you with insane amount of possible combinations. Let's even say that Raylo known the length of a code somehow, which is 9. It would have leave us with roughly 387 million possible variations. Rami Malik shakes in the corner next to this piece of hacking. But let's leave kids alone and check what adults are doing. Uh, winter is coming. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, don't talk about winter lightly. Viren comes up with his brilliant creative solution, but Haro rejects to swap bodies using the soul thing because he's too honorable which is understandable, and gives us a powerful moment. One of these men and women would gladly trade their life to save yours. Would you, Viren? I... <laughs> Get out. It gives a commentary on often used rhetorical trap. Soldiers can't deny that they will die for the king because if they do, they will be seen as cowards. At the same time, most of the people value their own lives and lives of their family members much greater than a uh, life of a current government leader. King Haro sees through this bullshit and turns the tables, though Viren could just lie and say yes, because Haro obviously at this point would not swap bodies, and that was a good moment. 
It's a shame that there will be not much of those. Anyway, Haru don't want to use the dark magic, but his main plan is straight up suicidal. He plans to sit in his bedchamber, completely alone, while all of the soldiers are waiting outside. His room of course has open balcony and windows. This is so lazy. Fighting them is already stupid enough, but if you really want to fight them, at least you could've picked a better spot. A tight, narrow place where assassin would have trouble to move, hide or dodge. You could've gone into the dungeons, packed the tunnels there with your men, set up a bunch of traps, built some barricades, hide behind the iron grates and steady doors, ask Viren and other mages if they even exist, to grab orbs and use primal magic if you don't like dark magic so much. But that would meant more animation, more characters and more backgrounds to draw. No, we don't have time for that kind of thing. But even better, you could've just dressed up like a peasant and slipped from the town for a few days. Because these assassins, from what we know, have no competence. They just wandering around and kindly ask people who they need to kill. I'm looking for someone. Then when full moon has passed, you would have returned and continued to rule. Basically anything would be better than sitting on your bed. Apparently Sauron leads an elite group of King's Guard in his what? 18 years? Well, you sure climb the ladder a lot faster when your daddy has influence. And I don't know how much of a sad person it makes King Haro. After all his years of rule, he has no loyal battle seasoned warriors at his side. Instead, he has a spoiled kid of his only friend, on what should be one of the most honorable positions. But jokes aside, it's just another instance where they restrain themselves from adding another character, even if it makes this world gradually more empty and less believable. I saw a bunch of people at council, but I guess they don't have their own 3D model. Man, I want to see this guy in motion. Then Viren comes to Haro, looking like he's ready to sacrifice himself. I have given thought to what you said. He calls Haro his bra, and then ends up frustrated on his knees. We don't really know what happened after. There is a popular theory that Viren forcefully is for bodies of Haro and his bird. Perrin comes out from the chamber without soul fang serpent, then Callum makes a scene right in front of the door. Also, why everyone in this show feel like they should politely wait for mages to finish their spell casting? I'll call out! I'll scream! Go ahead. And only then he tries to scream. Never mind in that, he already made enough of noise for Haro to hear. And since nobody comes out, it's reasonable to at least assume that something happened between Piran and Haro, involving Soul Fang Serpent. Besides them two, the only living thing was the bird, so this theory makes the perfect sense. But much of Piran's future actions do not connect with this at all, but I'll talk about it later. Rayla shows the egg to Ronan. This is a trick and a trap. You're a fool, Rayla. It, it's beautiful. Well, you've changed your mind pretty fast. So the elves finally attack. The hell was that? Please stop. I hope it's not some kind of Irish swear, Ronan, on my Christian channel. One assassin eliminates three guards in three seconds with incredible speed and agility. And even more elves show up, but then everything slows down, so Callum could contemplate beside the window. Now elves barely moving their feet, and they have problems fighting Soren and two Randys. Viren just standing there observing and stuff. I guess none of the elves find tempting to kill infamous dark mage that destroyed their lovely dragon egg. When Callum leaves, elves are so tired of Soren's mighty resistance, they are standing in a half circle and just pushing. So much for unstoppable elite assassin group at full moon. Callum manages to slip away, and the gang is having some proper inspirational moment at an open square, while their loved ones are getting slaughtered at the background. We could change things. We could make a difference. Just the three of us. Uh, four of us. 
What the fuck? Couldn't you wait and do it in the forest? Then they escape through the main gate because nobody is guarding it and it's shut open. Ronan stumbles on the balcony while his ribbon turns red. Well, that's quite confident of you. Leaving your target without making sure it's actually dead. It could have been an imposter, or illusion, or some other magical trick. Your ribbon is a great way to tell it. But Regina, what wouldn't you do for more dramatic moments? Many people complain about low frame rate. And yes, it's distracting at first, but it's not really that big of a deal. So long as your story is good, you can get away with things like that easily. I'm actually finding the animation gorgeous and unique. And facial expressions of characters convey emotions impressively well. The design, the scenery, the action scenes and magic looks great. And that's why I was so contradicted to stop watching it. A shame that work of so many artists undermined by sloppy writing. And the most ironic thing, writing was their selling point. Oh hey, we have a guy from Avatar who was a head writer who comes to us now. And all you can hear after, how it wasn't as good as The Last Airbender. But I honestly can't find any resolve to even start comparing them. Though I would agree it had a great potential. It could have been the next cartoon that everybody and their grumpy uncle would like. But instead it just lazily limps into something mediocre. What a waste. 